All right, so the goal of this video is gonna to be to analyze capillary beds in the lungs, and specifically gas exchange that occurs there, uh, the directions that gases flow, and how they're flowing from one side of the capillary bed to the other. Uh, remember that the body sort of depletes the blood that goes through it of all of its oxygen. It removes that oxygen for its own use, so you have deoxygenated blood that returns to the heart, and the goal in the lungs is, is to replenish that deoxygenated blood with oxygen and remove any excess carbon dioxide. Here I have a little lung capillary bed schematic, right? This is going to be an alveolus, which is the unit of the lung that makes direct contact with the capillary bed, and that's where gas exchange occurs. There's a capillary here, a red blood cell inside, and interstitial fluid in between, interstitial fluid being the, the fluid that flows between all the cells in your body. All right, so since this is a lung, right, this is part of the lung, um, you have oxygen in a very high concentration. Since initially this blood is deoxygenated, you have oxygen in a low concentration here. So remember, gas is always diffused from a high concentration to a low one. So we're going to get net flow inward. Right, the first way that oxygen kind of makes it into the bloodstream is going to be by depositing itself directly in the plasma within the capillary. Okay, this is method one. And again, this is minor. So we consider the, the amount of oxygen dissolved in the blood a very minor amount, and it isn't really significant and could never, uh, I guess, be enough to provide the cells with all the oxygen that they need. The second and more important way is taking the oxygen out of hemoglobin, or putting it onto hemoglobin, I should say. So the oxygen is going to diffuse through the alveolus, through the interstitial fluid, through the capillary, and into the red blood cell. Here, the oxygen sort of combines with, or I should say four oxygens, can combine with one hemoglobin molecule to form a joint hemoglobin oxygen compound. Uh, I write this little equation because I've seen it in many problems, and there are a lot of students that even though it kind of makes sense when I describe it, uh, you know, kind of look at it for the first time and go, you know, what the heck is going on? So just be familiar with this notation. It's sort of a modified chemical equation that just shows hemoglobin being attached to oxygens. And again, right, this is the second and this is the major way that oxygen is going to be transported through the bloodstream. All right. Turn that off. Now it's time to look at carbon dioxide, the, the more complex one. Well, this blood was coming from the tissues, and the tissues produced lots of carbon dioxide as they went to make tons of ATP. So the concentration of carbon dioxide in the capillary beds is high. Since the uh, lungs have direct contact with the air, and you can kind of breathe out all that carbon dioxide, the concentration of carbon dioxide here is low. So you get, again, from high to low, get a neck diffusion of carbon dioxide from the capillaries into the alveolus of the lung. Again, there's three ways carbon dioxide can kind of make its way into the lungs. The first is coming directly out of the bloodstream in. That's way number one. The second way was, remember that there was carbon dioxide attached to the hemoglobin, and that hemoglobin can sort of let it go. Right. In here, the concentration gradient drives hemoglobin to let go of that carbon dioxide, and it'll diffuse its way into the lungs. So that's method two. The third way, and the major way that this takes place, is going to be via bicarbonate. So bicarbonate, remember, is the main storage form, or the main transport method of carbon dioxide through the blood. In this case, we're doing the reverse of the reaction that took place in the tissues, and bicarbonate is going to combine with a hydrogen ion to form carbonic acid, which is H2CO3. Carbonic acid is then going to sort of dissociate into carbon dioxide and water. And remember that this reaction, just like the forward reaction, uh, is powered by an enzyme called carbonic anhydrase. And carbonic anhydrase is only in red blood cells. So here's the third way, and this is the reverse of what happened in the body tissues. And again, this guy's major. This guy's kind of major. I think uh, I've seen numbers like 70% uh, of the blood of the carbon dioxide's bicarb, and about 20 to 25% of it's going to be attached to hemoglobin, and then like 
five to ten percent of it's going to be dissolved in the blood. So you can see that there's a significant amount that's uh, bicarbonate stored, uh, carbon dioxide stored as bicarbonate, and that's kind of how it's going to get from the capillaries into the lungs.